This is Everyday People, a program in which we investigate the lives of people making a difference in our community. Hi, this is Robert McBride with another episode of Everyday People, people making a difference in our community. On today's show, we have, we're actually going to interview a few people that are on the Putney Craft Tour. Putney Craft Tour has been in existence for, this is its 40th year. I think it's the oldest sort of organized craft tour in the country. It is. It is, which is cool. And so um, I think we sort of just started the very beginning with the craft tour is, how did it start, and uh, three people, I'm going to let them quickly introduce themselves. To my left is... I'm Robert Birch, I own Brandywine Glassworks in Putney. I'm Tom Goldschmidt, and I turn wooden bowls. And I'm Peter Maynard, and I'm a furniture maker. Great, great, well welcome aboard. So I hear you have been, Robert, from the very beginning involved with this craft tour? I have. Great. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the Putney craft tour? and why it's so unique? Um, well, it is, as you mentioned, the oldest uh, running craft tour in the U.S. Uh, there's 25 of us that um, are doing different types of work in our studios all over, uh, within about 10 miles of Putney. Mm. And you can drive around and uh, go right into the studios and actually see a lot of, a lot of the studios are doing demonstrations. So you can see uh, woodworking, you can see glass blowing, you can see ceramics, mm. and actually see it being made. And if you want, make requests, and people will, like I do, requests for people right at the uh, studio, and the test. they want something blown out of glass, we'll make it. Yeah, yeah. So d just to get it up front, and we want to mention a few times, when is the craft tour, and which days does it run in times? Just it's November 23rd, 24th, 25th, from 10 till 5. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. Is there a web page? Uh, there is. It's uh, www.putneycrafts.com. Okay. So I want everyone to get that right into their Google calendars and on the on the wall in the refrigerator because it's a really I've been able to come to a few of them. There's an amazing amount of artists on this tour and stuff. So um, why don't you, Tom, tell us briefly what you do and then have Peter just a real brief and then we can get back more into the discussion of the tour. Well this is my second year on the craft tour and it's been a wonderful experience for me. I love the idea of people coming to my studio. Um, it, it, it just kind of generates an excitement about the work and uh, it's very convenient for me. It's really lovely to have people come and visit. We're kind of up on the end of a dirt road, so we don't get a lot of visitors. Right. <laughs> Drive-bys. <laughs> yeah. Dang. So we, 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 have a, we have a lovely time on this weekend. It's the weekend after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. directly after Thanksgiving. And uh, it's, it's been a wonderful experience for me being on the craft tour, but also for many years going to see friends and neighbors who have contributed to the craft tour. And you turn wood? I turn wooden bowls. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, my background is mostly in architecture. This is something I came to kind of later in my life. Mm -hmm. But I find the, you know, spontaneous design process that happens when a, when a piece of wood is turning on my lathe, what I get, I get a chance to just work with it in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Mm -hmm. It's really a very different kind of work for me. But it also, it's kind of an extension of the, uh, you know, the form follows function. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Design process. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like sure that. the the wood speaks to you. Oh yeah, I'm sure it speaks to you. Well, you know, yeah. if you listen, Robert. Yeah, if you listen, you're like, that's true. That's <laughs> you have always to the take thing. the time to listen. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Peter, Peter yes. Maynard, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you create. Well, I've been a woodworker in in the area for close to 45 years. Uh, I became aware of the Putney Crafts tour. 30 years ago, and knew that it was going on, and I've gone two or three times on the tour to see, meet the people and see what's being made, and it has struck me as being a, a collection of really creative craftsmen living in more or less the rural setting and supporting themselves or amending their other 
their other jobs, but um, I was always impressed with it. Always seemed to be um, more successful, more bringing in more people than what was usual for the North Country kind of craft scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've always thought of, of th that they seemed to know what they were doing in that regard, bringing people in. And, um, and we wanted to join, but we're uh, two steps out of the zone. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were invited this year. Uh, thanks to my wife, who is a, a painter and in touch with some of the folks like uh, Judy, um, Hawkins. Judy Hawkins. Judy Hawkins, yes, right. they're old friends. And um, Great. so that's pretty much it. And you basically make furniture, right? Yes, I've been right. making furniture f for the first 25 years as a high-end high custom in New York City, mm -hmm. working up here and delivering down there. And I've since moved into a more craftsman-like thing of making my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, that's part great. of this scene, Good. part of the whole... River Valley craft scene. Well, welcome so. aboard. Thanks. thanks. So I, I'm going to go back to you, Robert, since you have the institutional knowledge of this this organ of this thing. So people kind of just came together. So generally now, are people like Peter mentioned that he and his wife were invited this year to kind of participate. So over the years, um, is there a juring process or? You know, do you have to live in zip code 05 something something? And just, you know, how, does, how, do, how do you work with that? Probably at the beginning it was just artists working together that said, let's do this. But as it's evolved and become a big event, when it's a we, lot to manage. When we first started, it was basically people within about three or four miles of Putney mm -hmm. itself. And uh, as it became more and more successful, we found there were more people uh, wanting to join. And also, one of our original members moved from Putney to Westminster West. Uh, and all of a sudden, they wanted to stay on the tour, <laughs> so they kind of expanded it. And uh, now it runs through uh, Saxons River, Westminster West, Westminster, mm -hmm. and Putney. Mm -hmm. And uh, it covers um, a good area. And it's, it's also, what happens is when you travel around, you see the real charm of this part of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. Um, and also going into people's studios, um, you get a real feel for not only what they do, but how they live their life, their mm -hmm. um, loves, their passion, and uh, you know, and, and uh, we love to talk to people. And uh, you know, we've uh, a lot of people that have come on the tour have become good friends and collectors, mm -hmm. and uh, it's worked out very well. So great, um, great. I, and you know, I'm a painter myself, and have participated in different kinds of open studios and stuff. I think the two things that you always kind of know is that one, it gives you a chance to clean up your studio. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, it's like inviting totally, people over for totally. dinner so you get it in order. And if you're lucky enough, and you know, like your studio, you might be able to still do some kind of work if you wanted a detail. But sometimes you're, you know, you have to really just kind of be there and ready to greet and talk constantly. The other hard thing when you when you do these tours is you don't get a chance to go around to each other's studios mm -hmm. because you're in that studio for three days. I've never and, been on a tour. I know, and you never yeah. get to be on the tour, you know. And that's we talk about that a lot in the open studios for the Vermont State Craft thing in Bellows Falls because of just maybe getting together with the artist another time and just doing a movable yeah. thing where you just you're not publicizing it, but you get to go into each other's studios. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you have collaborations with different ones of the artists that you see and maybe go in and talk with them, but it's really, it's always, so I don't get to go see what everybody else is doing and say hello to them. That's true, it's true. So why don't we give the website again, because I want to make sure everyone gets this on their calendar. It's www.putneycrafts.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great. So Tom, tell me a little bit about, you know, the wood that you choose or chooses you? Is it all kind of right off your own land or you might be driving down the road and see something or a friend calls you to take this tree down? And I think, that, you know, all of those things happen, Robert. Uh, the wood, the bowls that I brought this morning, one's uh, black walnut, which is a little unusual for this area, but there was a tree in the village of Westminster just down the road from here and um, came down. And a, f uh, a friend of mine called me and said, boy, you might be interested in this wood. And of course I was. 
uh, I got there just before you know they were cutting it into firewood, uh, which is often the case. Yeah. You know this wood is kind of in my wood pile, just as it's going towards the stove. I stop and look, and it's like, wow, look at this beautiful yeah. grain. You know, an amazing piece of wood. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the source of my wood is mostly local. The spalted uh, sugar maple is the other bowl that I brought. And that came from uh, West Dummerston. My daughter and her husband uh, live in West Dummerston. And whenever they see some interesting wood, they tell me. Mm -hmm. I just got an email from a fellow who was on, came to the tour last year. And he was all excited. A hundred-year-old apple tree had fallen wow. in his yard. And I had invited him to bring some of that wood to me <laughs> and we'll see if we can make a bowl or two yeah and he loves that idea yeah that's very that. cool that's very cool and there was so the bowls are basically functional too i mean yeah. if you want to eat out of them or toss a salad oh, yeah, in them or whatever you yeah. would be yeah. able to do that too and i finished my bowls with a mixture of uh, mineral oil and beeswax mm -hmm. we have hives so i gather the oh. beeswax mm -hmm. makes a nice finish and i i give a little tin of that mixture because I want people to have you know right. a, a relationship with this wood. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it is a you know living right. thing, and you need to take care of it. I assume you don't put it in the dishwasher. No, it does not go in the dishwasher <laughs> or the microwave. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, no. I, I just, just checking. <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't need soap either. It I mean, it's one of those things that you can really just wash fantastic. it quickly and dry it off. Yeah, yeah. So Peter, about the the furniture. So as you. So how will you be setting up for this craft tour? Where will you will you be at your studio? Yeah. People will come to you, or you is there a space they've um, donated yes. to the, the visiting artists for this one of the guest artists? So, the my wife looked into what kind of venues w would be appropriate huh? in the in the geography of the whole tour, sure. and we happened to luck out on the um, it's the Putney Cares building right next to the Noise House in downtown oh. Putney. And um, they rented us the space for those three days. And um, it's great for us because it puts us right at the, sort of the epicenter of the beginning, right cool. near the Gleanery. Yeah. Um, that's very nice. And uh, of course, I, as a furniture maker, I can't really set up demos because um, even, uh, even if I had a thing where people could come into my shop, I would not be woodworking while people right, were visiting right. because you really kind of have to not be distracted while you're spinning mm -hmm. things on a lathe, for instance. But um, uh, we were very fortunate that we're in the middle of Putney, which is a great kind of guest spot in mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, we will have a lot of furniture and a lot of paintings. Mm -hmm. Um, we're just outside the zone of the tour. Okay. We have a showroom in Bellows Falls. Mm -hmm. um, and after the tour and into perpetuity, where you can see our work there or you can come and visit us at our home. Yeah. But um, for now, we're setting up at Putney, right. okay. which is great. Perfect and your setup. wife is Marcy Maynard. Marcy Maynard, who's great. she's an amazing painter yeah. and she's always doing stuff behind the scenes. but. Just doesn't want to show her cute face. Yeah, she's here off on camera the TV. right now, right? We might just swap you two out. She <laughs> leaves it up. Yeah, that is so obvious. Well, she leaves it up to me. Great. I don't know. Well, that's exciting. She's much better at it. Though. So, Robert, tell us a little bit about your glasswork. I'm looking at this beautiful piece of glasswork, and you've got to describe it a little bit because we will be mm -hmm. uh, putting this on the radio. But tell us about this bowl. Um, is got uh, the colors we use. Um, it's fairly bright yellow and orange, and we use different elements to color the glass. This particular one has uranium, cadmium, and selenium, which are okay. rare metals. Um, what I do is I start with a 2,000 degree gather of molten glass on the end of a four foot steel pipe, and start with a small bubble, and then I'll pick up the color um, and uh, melt that in and swirl it and I can grab the end of the gather of molten glass, hold it and then roll the pipe and it twists and swirls the colors mm -hmm. into the piece and then to get the shape uh, after I've blown it out what I do is I use um, a rod on the bottom and then I uh, open it up a little bit into kind of a cylinder and then I use centrifugal force to actually spin it out um, 
So when I right before I spin it out, this is probably six or eight inches wide, and now it's about a foot wide. Um, and not only do I spin the rod so it opens out, um, I swing it the long way, and then it collapses and gets the real wavy effect. Mm. So that's how we do it. And the glass is um, constantly changing mm. in its viscosity, mm. so it, it goes from as hard as diamonds to as, as soft as molasses. So, and everything in between, and it changes very, very quickly. Mm. So you kind of have to dance with the yeah, glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, do you will you actually be doing any demonstration that day, or I to love to do demonstrations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have. Lots people good tend time. to be like that. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's great. Yeah, <laughs> I turn into a ham. I do. Cool. Uh, but we kind of focus on um, kids too. So mm. if they're there. We try to. Um, Get them excited, and a number of people I know have gone into glass blowing because they've seen it at our the light switch studio. went on. Studio, yeah. and uh, you know, I love the fact that I've had an effect on people's lives. Yeah, that's true. And there's a there's a nice group. I mean, I imagine there's a group of all different kinds of artists forming. But in Bell's Falls, we currently have two glass people now: Suga Studios and Chris Sherwin Glass, and Robert DeGrenny A's out there. And there's like quite a trail of kind of glass work going on, which is really kind of exciting. Good and glass blowers. It, yeah, and it's really magical to see it happening, you know, you know, and, and work on that. That's great. Um, and it, it's also interesting. So did you um, come from a different background into glass or did you study at a school to learn about glass blowing? You know, I'm uh, lucky to a certain extent in that I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. So I've come up with different kind of unique designs. Uh, I feel like if I wasn't self-taught, I'd kind of be in the main stream of, you know, uh, shapes and I think I think that's really added to my uniqueness in my work mm -hmm. uh, and I basically even after 45 years I play with the glass mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and it's amazing where it will lead you uh, and you were talking about following and looking and seeing and paying attention listening to that uh, glass and you know it'll tell you it'll tell you directions to mm -hmm. go and it's mm -hmm. so exciting to follow those paths mm -hmm. most of the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are no mistakes you learn you just learn you know sometimes the place you don't think you're going to go is the most exciting place you end up you know which is True. what i love so tell me uh, because there's how many artists on this going to be participating this weekend 25 25 so are there other glass people or some other you know i might ask you each to highlight if there's some other people in your field you know we don't have to go in big descriptions but are there uh, several glass people working on things. There are uh, four different glass people, wow. stained glass. Um, my daughter uh, is a glass blower too. She's mm -hmm. on the tour in her new studio. Mm -hmm. um, she makes uh, grandchildren besides that, okay. which is really nice. But uh, they're she fragile does, also. <laughs> she does jewelry and uh, this type of glass blowing, the larger type. Uh -huh. And uh, there's uh, Julia Brandis who does stained glass. Okay. And she does beautiful lampshades and different um, different pieces like that. She does windows. Um, and uh, yeah, that's mainly, there's a couple great. other glass blowers, but I can't. No, that's great though. There's um, a variety. If someone says, glass is my thing, there's a lot of things Josh, that someone could go Josh, see. Oh, Josh. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Great. Yeah. Josh, Just, turn off. Yeah, great. And what about with your work, Tom, and other woodworkers? Um, are there many others? Well, Peter, of course. Well, right. Amazing furniture. Right, oh. right. But if we're talking about this turning, and then we can get into the furniture thing, somebody say, oh, yeah, I just want to see turned things or things sculpted out of wood. Are there? Are you aware of some of the other artists you know, that are there? Um, That's okay. I don't the, one that, the one that comes to mind mm -hmm. is Wendy Wilson. She's no longer on the tour. Mm -hmm. But Wendy, for years, was the, you know, the Putney Craft Tour bowl turner. Ah. She has a lovely shop yeah. in Putney. And... Uh, I've been to it a number of times. She's kind of an inspiration mm -hmm. to me just because of her attitude about her work mm -hmm. and how she kind of integrated into her life. life. Right. Right. And uh, Wendy hasn't been on the tour for a while. Yep. I think that might have been one of the uh, reasons they asked me to join because, you know... To fill kind of an area of... Yeah, there was, yeah, some, there was a little fantastic. something missing there. That's great. So, yeah, I feel privilege that I kind of follow in her footsteps. That's great. And Peter, I know you're you're new to new to the thing, but are there other furniture people that you've noticed that are on the tour that um, No. You know, said? woodworkers in this area, there's so few and far between. You know, there must be about a thousand between yeah, right, here right, right, and exactly. Rattleboro. In the zip code, yes. yes. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, 
I don't. No one comes to mind except okay. for Tom, of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really familiar. Mm -hmm. um, I'm new to new it. Yeah. So um, that's really I can't really yeah. offer more than that. Yeah. Talk about the other people. Yeah. 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 So some of the other people on the tour, you're going to kind of give us a little bit of highlights in the meantime. You know, make sure you you know come to this craft this tour over the weekend. You well, know, I've been, you know I've been working a little bit with Fiona. Uh, Morehouse. Yep, she was on the show last year yeah. for it. I think was that her first year last year or two years ago? I think two, yeah, two yeah, or three two years. years. Yeah, yeah, she might have been on this two years. Ago, and right? she does lovely pottery. Yeah, she calls it some kind of an alchemy. You know, yeah. where she's kind of making beautiful objects um, in her own very unique style. Right. The other one that I I think is really interesting is uh, Kim Crawl, and she's making. Um, oh yeah. Vessels gourds. out of gourds. Yeah, she's growing wow. gourds, oh, yeah. and then she's decorating the the, the gourds. Mm -hmm. And I know people yeah. just yeah. love those. Yeah. I've heard about them. I haven't been to her yeah. studio yet. Yeah, I think a few years ago now there's some quilt makers or fabric tapestry people on the tour. Well, that's another kind there's of some lovely weavers. Weavers. Um, Dina Dina Gardenstein yeah. Yeah. does uh, 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 woven. Yeah, chenille chenille the scars mm -hmm. and beautiful beautiful stuff. Right. And she also teaches, right? She has. She does, she has. So it's the, uh, a bit of a school, yeah. a weaving school, too. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, Rachel Shaw. Yeah, Rachel said Rachel's it. Okay, been, yeah. I think she's only been on the tour a couple uh -huh. times now. That's okay. And, uh, and uh, she's making mittens. Yeah, yeah they're beautiful. fantastic. Yeah, they're really, yeah, they're really, really yeah. lovely, wild, great mittens. Fingerless she, ones and all kinds of things are really. She takes. She, she takes. Uh, sweaters and recycles yeah. a lot of the material and the thing about her work is that you can go to her with a sweater i think and have yeah. have her actually make take it apart it. and do it so if it's something that's in your family from the past uh, uh, that's, that you want to kind of continue with you can do that that's it's very unique beautiful work yeah i think we need to maybe follow up after this with some of the artists just about the work they're doing we'll look to lynn barrett here who's you know, Southern Vermont Arts Magazine, which is fantastic, um, you know, to follow up with different artists on the show. Like, it's nice to bring a couple together, you know, two or three, and kind of discuss the work. One thing we, we haven't really spoken about are the painters. And mm -hmm. there's a collection of wonderful painters on the, on the tour to... to like round out the like Marcy the Maynard, bolts. yeah, like, Marcy Maynard, like Marcy comes Maynard. To mind. yes, that comes to mind. Good, no, yes. yeah, no, please speak Hawkins up, speak out, speak out, man. Who Deb else? Lazar and Great. Um, Nancy Calaccio. They they yep. all they offer something really wonderful, yep. and it's a great um, complement to the hands-on craft aspect of the tour. Yeah, we no, really I, yep. have Go a mention the ceramics. People. Oh right, right. David Mischke and we we mentioned Fiona. Mm -hmm. uh, David Mischke does these beautiful, very very uh, specific painted or glazed yeah. patterns that are just beautiful. Ken Pick does a lot of uh, functional and sculptural work, mm -hmm. uh, very large work. So uh, and a lot of the a lot of the craftspeople on this tour are nationally known. I mean mm -hmm. they they have a reputation for the whole country. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you'll see some really quality, yeah. quality work. Yeah, which really kind of brings up another quick question about you know we do the craft tour, but are there other specific um, shows that you all participate in uh, where you go like Sunapi or this yes. or that? You know, I mean, I know some artists that say we just do these two shows, one in Washington D.C. and one somewhere else. But besides the Putney Craft Tour. Uh, the you're out there with your work. The Sunapee work. Right. Well, and uh, most of us deal with galleries all mm -hmm. over the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I have about 40 galleries that we deal wow. with on a regular basis and then uh, a large catalog called Artful Home. Mm -hmm. So that takes care of a, a yeah. lot of our business. So we don't, I don't leave home a lot. Right, and I, right. I like hanging out at home. Well, thanks for coming all the way up to Bellows Falls today. <laughs> <Big trip. laughs> and, uh, you're only on the edge. You didn't quite make it downtown. <laughs> So, and Tom, what about you? With with your background and you doing these more, uh, is um, do you kind of stay local with this? Do you work with some galleries or do other shows? It's or? really local for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and uh, I have some of my work in the um, River Artisans Co-op mm -hmm. right here. In Great, yeah, right downtown. Right Falls. in the shop there. It's a lovely shop. And uh, I've been doing this little uh, Christmas show. It's a benefit for Orchard Hill School mm -hmm. over in Walpole. 
And that's a lovely weekend. Is that go, when was, is that happened already? It's it's later. It's it's a little later in December. I'm okay. not even sure of the date. Oh, it's for Orchard Hill. Yeah, but it's, a, it's a benefit for Orchard Hill, oh, and great. I love doing that show. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. But th- th- that's really it for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't make a lot of bowls, Robert. Yeah. I, you know, this isn't you know. Well, come get him quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when the two Saul, he's shutting down the studio that day. So you better get there on Saturday morning to, to Tom's studio, man. That's great. And Peter, what about you? And I mean, like, you know, creating furniture yeah. that's usable. I'm, I'm sure you have clients, but when you've done reach out through. As I said earlier, at first we were doing the New York market as, mm. as you know, high end custom furniture makers. And I got tired of like reinventing the wheel. Every single job was different than the next. So we went, we started going down to Asheville, North Carolina. Oh. And there's a very vibrant crafts community down there. Mm. And we wanted, we, we, we came back and wanted to see that more in our area, yeah. this lower River Valley area. And Brattleboro to Bellows Falls is a, a little gold, seam of gold running through. Mm. And so, yes, we do the Sunapee Crafts Fair, but the, the other, more local even than Sunapee for us, would be to participate in this Putney Crafts mm-hmm. Tour. Mm-hmm. And, get our name known. We're actually, we, our work goes all over the country. Very little of it gets sold in the right. lower river valley. Right. So this is perfect for us. Cool. Well, I'm lucky and glad that you guys are getting to participate in this. See how yeah, it goes, how you leverage it. Feel and everything. Great about it. It's also kind of exciting that it came up between Rachel and someone could bring a sweater to her and she could, you know, unravel it and then make these gloves and how someone's bringing like an apple tree. To, I mean, what a <laughs> yeah. unique, yeah. cool, thing yeah. to have that incredible kind of intimacy with Absolutely. something to come to the artist and ask them to create it or to watch you kind of evolving your piece, Robert, you know, in front of their eyes, you know, it's really magical. So um, I think I've been given the high sign here to wrap up the show. So once again, give us the basics on the Putney tour since you are the voice of the official voice, Robert Birch. On uh, November 23rd, 24th, 25th from 10 o'clock till 5. Um, For information, you can call 802-387-4032, and the website is uh, www.putneycrafts.com, and that will give you all the information that you need, and there's a um, A a map on site so you can load it into your phone, so all the information, and uh, yeah, we're more than welcome and excited to uh, be part of a tour this year. That's and great. The brochure is everywhere, hopefully. So yeah, yes, yeah, they're they're in downtown Bellows Falls. Keep an eye out. <laughs> but it's also great. So thank you so much. I mean, I think everyone make sure you bring your checkbooks and your credit cards. You know, it's a good time before the holiday season or something you want to add to your home and really just actually. You know, what's so lovely about Vermont is its scale and the access we have to each other and to artists that you can actually go and speak with them and watch what they're doing and stuff. So please, you know, for the residents in town, when you have visitors, take a, a minute to go out of your home on um, on those days and, uh, and share with your friends far and wide to come on up that weekend. And that'd be great. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Robert. So I want to thank Fact TV for being such a great resource and allowing us to share stories. And I also want to thank uh, Chroma Technology, uh, First Light, formerly Sovernet, and uh, the Vermont Arts Council and the National Endowment for the Arts for helping to support RAMP also. So until the next time, see you around the square.